My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I've been one of my friends. I'm just trying to make some money. My job is not just to entertain us, but to educate us and teach. Put this thing in context. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. This is one tough market. Dow was down to 895 points today before rallying to close down 257 points. S&P fell 1.71%. NASDAQ lost 1.87%. And that's after a fabulous late-day bounce from much lower levels. I think that 3.30 p.m. rally that took a lot of people's breaths away was really started with short sellers who were covering or closing out the positions because they're now getting concerned that one of these drug companies working on drugs that would lessen lethality of corona may have had some success. But fear is more powerful than greed, and this selling is uh, driven by a justifiable fear of the future, coupled with the fear of catching COVID-19 yourself. It's an unnerving combination, and it's threatening to bring commerce to a full stop in this country, aside from the pallets of, yeah, you guessed it, Purell passing through the portals of America's now shaky retail establishments. We just got through a roller coaster of a week marked by the emergence of some terrifying sector bear markets. It's oil and gas. I don't know if you look at that. You know, I hate the stocks. Wow. Justified. Travel and leisure. Mm. Retail, some better than others. And the hideous financials are all of which are worrisome because the borrowers are so numerous in that sector, in those sectors. And, and they're so big that they can actually hurt lenders. This market's repealing longstanding gains in some sectors with breathtaking speed. But honestly, those moves pale in comparison to the fast and furious decline in U.S. Treasury yields. The 10 years now paying you just 0.77 percent. That's down from 0.92 percent yesterday. It's stunning. If I weren't Jimmy Chill, I would say it's insane. Right now, the bond market's calling the two. Bond prices are blasting at record highs, while their yields, of course, make record lows. They might as well be screaming at you to sell all your stocks before the coronavirus-induced recession hits. And irony of ironies, the bond market is screaming this just as we got still one more phenomenal employment report this morning. Some great hiring numbers. But those figures are already being dismissed as rear-view mirror-gazing. The market senses that something dreadful is right around the corner, a fallout, a freeze-up, and we might see the signs of it when we come into work on Monday. So what, with that in mind, why don't we go to our game plan of another, what I think is going to be very shaky week. Next Monday morning, we're going to be greeted by the tally of new coronavirus estimates, and I've got to tell you, I think those define this market. We care about the numbers from China where the regime's totalitarian methods seem like they've gotten the situation under control. But, of course, we care about the numbers in the rest of the world, where the virus is spreading like wildfire. More importantly, from our perspective, it's spreading here. The whole country's on edge because we have no defenses against this disease, no immunity, no vaccine, no treatment. And the government's response, at least to many, leaves a lot to be desired. Put it all together, and it's possible we'll continue to see an exponential increase in the number of cases. If that keeps uh, up, then you can expect Treasury yields will plummet even further. Yes, they could even go to zero. They might even go negative. I've spoken to dozens of people trying to figure out if it's just the fear factor that's driving the bond market. And I get mixed reports, everything from total flight to quality to total manipulation. It doesn't really matter, though, because in the end, the new cases are the new cases and new deaths have more to do with the direction of the stock market than the fundamentals. I sure wish the Chinese would sell their trillion dollars in bonds already, don't you? We need that supply. Remember, that was like our biggest worry for years? Now, <laughs> we're begging them to sell them. Now, you know what? The moment we stop paying attention to the fundamentals, that was the moment we lose our rigor. That's why I can't wait to hear what Thor Industries has to say when it reports on Monday morning. Thor's the biggest maker of recreational vehicles around, and I'm betting they're going to give us a lot of the insight to the state of the consumer. Big discretionary goods here. Their inventories, they tend to bloom when people are scared to death. The company's been a very good barometer of the economy. It's a, people use that overused cliche, canary in a coal mine, but they actually do fit that. Uh, this used to be a heavily linked uh, heavily linked to oil and gas. As gasoline prices went down, Thor went up. No more. Uh, oil fell 10% today. It's an astonishing collapse. But I bet it means nothing for Thor the stock because, well, what really matters is whether you want to shop for an RV during a pandemic. 
And it's a close one here for Stitch Fix. That's the online subscription service that's like having a digital uh, personal shop. Remember, we visited them in San Francisco. This company has an impressive track record of profitability with a stock that's now down 11 percent this year. Has something changed? Is the business still thriving? I suspect Stitch Fix model is ideal for this environment, but we'll see. You want something that's working here and can keep working? Well, how about Franco Nevada? Now, that's, I'm sorry, Franco, Nevada. I got a lot of criticism from Nevadans this week that I should pronounce it like I'm from Philadelphia, which I am. It would be Nevada, you know, if you're from 10th and South or from 3rd and Arch. Anyway, uh, these are companies, this is a company with mixed streams of royalties and mineral resources, including, of course, gold. You know, I think gold's the perfectly positioned commodity because it's a safe haven in times of economic chaos. While I do try to stay chill at all times, uh, it is difficult to cam- contain myself when I see someone flock into my Twitter file and say, hey, uh, do you like gold? I mean, for heaven's sake, I've liked gold for practically the whole 15-year run of Mad Money, an anniversary we celebrated this morning when we rang the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange. I was hoping you had that. She's I look fat. I don't look fat. Okay. Hey, there's my, there's my nephew, Cliff Mason, right behind just He's our, our head writer, our only writer. Anyway, he's the guy who went down like this. It's exciting for me. Now, as the consumer going underground, let's find out when Dick's Sporting Goods reports, okay? Now, uh, last time it delivered a monster good number. Remember, the outbreak won't be included in these results, but management here is so transparent that I bet they'll give us a look and feel for the past few weeks. I don't know about you, but I'm refinancing my house, getting an amazing rate at the ten, as the 10-year settled at 7.77%. And that is a record low, by the way. But are people still buying new homes with this newfound accidental affordability? Well, we'll know more when we see the latest mortgage application numbers Wednesday morning. I got to tell you, if they're not up, then you're going to hear recession, recession, recession. Thursday's chock full of good reads. We hear from Dollar General. My competitor, Dollar Tree, had a not-so-hot quarter. Dollar General's been hitting it out of the park. This discount retailer's made fortunes for its shareholders, and I bet it shines even in an all-coronavirus world. Hey, speaking of red-hot retailers, how about Ulta Beauty? Which got an upgrade today, right in the teeth of the sell-off. I'm torn here. I think people buying Ulta here seem to believe it's recession-proof. But I'd say it's recession-resistant. I'm concerned about anything retail here, though, especially a, a, a hair salon component. Well, you can't, get, you can't get your hair done through Amazon yet. After the close, we get results from Broadcom, which is symbol AVGO, and Adobe. Broadcom's a hybrid of semiconductor parts, including parts for Apple and software, thanks to its CA acquisition. Good yield. We own it for the Chapel Trust. Why don't you follow along by joining the ActionAlertsPlus.com club. A lot of bulletins today. As for Adobe, it has the ability to allow some separation between tech and everything else. Why? Because you can use the Adobe software from home if you need to stay home. It allows you to be, uh, like, how do you say, it, more creative than you'd be otherwise. If they see a slowdown, then Friday's going to be nasty. It's a big company. Uh, finally, there's Gap, which just appointed a new CEO, Sonia Singal who previously ran the old Navy division and ran it well. Will it matter? With retail, you never know. But a big chunk of Gap is mall apparel, and mall's been getting mauled, couldn't resist, weakest leak in the chain. On Friday, we're supposed to hear from Illinois Tool Works. Now, why did I put this up? Certainly nothing matter with Illinois Tool Works. I did it because the analyst meeting was canceled because, well, there's a massive wave of canceled events, and I think I don't have to tell you why that is. But think of these cancellations as a reminder This is not business as usual. And in many cases, it's no business at all. The only thing we really lack next week is a read on travel. Cruise lines, for example, they traded multi-year lows today for a little bit of bounce at the end of the day. Midday, there was a bounce, too. I wonder if these dividends are sustainable for Carnival and for Royal Caribbean. The region's stock has already paid the prices down more than 50%. I'm sure the airlines are better than the cruise lines. But how much better? They spent a lot of money on buying back stock. Ouch! Bottom line, pay attention to what these companies have to say next week. But don't forget that at least for the moment, COVID-19 is in the driver's seat. Let's go to Mike in Florida, please. Mike. You got Mike there? Mike. Yeah, this is Mike. Speak to me. Hey, uh, I'm calling about AMC, the theater. Um, I'm looking for some cheap stocks, and I came across this stock, and it it, well, it, I mean, that's a, a, it, that's a coronavirus stock. Now, the, uh, they did just do something rather extraordinary. They, um, they eliminated the dividend buyback stock. That was actually smart. 
Uh, and I think, but I still think it requires it re- relies on gatherings. And if you have to gather right now, it's a no no fly zone. Judith in Alabama, Judith. Hello, Jim. I'm a longtime investor. Please thank listening you. Listening to you. All right, thank you. What's up? Well, I inherited around 1,200 shares of Boeing Good. at $93 basis in 2013, mm-hmm. and have sold. Six hundred and twenty eighteen. Oh, good. The Boeing stock rose up to four hundred plus, and now it's in a nosedive with the various problems the company is having, and then with the coronavirus. Right. I need to know what to do with my other six hundred. I don't want to. I don't want to sell Boeing down here. Um, I didn't like that article in the New York Times about David Calhoun. It made the company seem, I think, much worse than it is. I don't think the company's bad. Uh, I think the company made mistakes. I don't think it's a bad company. That's only based on a 100-year look. Maybe I should be uh, more concerned about the last five minutes. Uh, but I don't want you to sell both. All right, next week, pay attention to earnings, but realize that the coronavirus is in control. Well, man, tonight is Splunk and a funk. Or is the type of stock you should circle back to amid the market turmoil? I'm talking with the CEO. Then, as the coronavirus continues to spread, where are investment opportunities if America goes into the bunker? Yeah. Stay in place. I'm revisiting my stay-at-home portfolio. And with the market heading lower today, I'm talking with one of the wisest women on Wall Street to find out her take on the volatility and what to do. Do not miss my sit-down with Elievest's founder, Sally Krawcheck. And stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.